dear students i am rekha choudhry today we will take up part 1 of chapter 6 life processes of class 10th science the learning objectives of today's session are to help you learn about and appreciate life processes to enable you understand the different types of nutrition to help you understand the mode of nutrition in plants animals and human beings so have you ever thought how do we tell the difference between what is alive and what is not alive well there are some criteria on the basis of which we decide what is living and what is not living in today's session we will learn what life processes are and we will discuss nutrition in living organisms in detail there are some basic processes in living organisms which are necessary for maintenance of life such processes are called life processes the basic life processes are nutrition respiration transportation and excretion you must have heard these terms in your earlier classes today we will learn about nutrition as a life process when we talk or when we do some work we use energy even when we are not doing any apparent activity energy is needed to maintain a state of order in our body the source of energy is the food we eat food enables organisms to build their bodies grow repair damaged parts of the body provide energy for various activities this is made possible by the process called nutrition nutrition is the process by which food is being taken in broken down and utilized by the body that is food being taken in taken apart and taken up the various components of food such as carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins and minerals are called nutrients some sources of carbohydrates are wheat rice maize potato etc fats can be obtained from plants as well as animal sources some of the plant sources are groundnut mustard sunflower etc animal sources of fats include fish meat milk the major source of proteins are egg milk fish meat and different type of pulses green leafy vegetables are rich source of vitamins and minerals we obtain vitamins from fruits and vegetables such as tomato orange lemon papaya carrot animal sources of vitamins include liver fish and milk we can obtain different minerals from various fruits vegetables and animal products for example banana spinach apple ginger milk egg and fish the uptake of these nutrients and their utilization by the body is called nutrition there are two different modes of nutrition the mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotrophic nutrition organisms that exhibit such mode of nutrition are called autotrophs green plants are called autotrophs because they prepare their own food the mode of nutrition in which organisms take in food prepared by plants is called heterotrophic nutrition organisms that exhibit such mode of nutrition are called heterotrophs 
animals are heterotrophs because they depend on plants directly or indirectly for their food. Plants prepare their own food with the help of certain raw materials such as water, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll, minerals and sunlight. Water and minerals are present in soil which are absorbed by roots. Chlorophyll is the green pigment present in leaves and green parts of the plants which helps in capturing the energy of sunlight. The process by which plants prepare their food by using the raw materials is called photosynthesis. You must have heard this term in lower classes. Plants prepare food in the leaves. As you can see in the screen, tiny pores present on the surface of leaves. They are called stomata. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Stomata helps in exchange of gases and in transpiration. Photosynthesis takes place in three main steps. They are absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. Next is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy and splitting up of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. This is followed by reduction of carbon dioxide by hydrogen to form carbohydrates. The process of photosynthesis can be represented in an equation as you can see in the screen. In the equation, we can see that the raw materials are carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. In this reaction, carbon dioxide and water molecules as reactants in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll produce glucose molecule. During this process, oxygen is also released. Plants store their food in the form of starch. So far, we have discussed how autotrophic nutrition takes place in plants. Do you have any idea about heterotrophic nutrition takes place in living organisms? There are three main types of heterotrophic nutrition. They are saprophytic, parasitic and holozoic nutrition. Saprophytic nutrition is a type of nutrition in which organisms get their food from dead and decaying organisms. They break down the food material outside their body and then absorb it. This type of nutrition is found in mushroom, bread mold, yeast and some bacteria. Parasitic nutrition is a type of nutrition in which organisms get their food from living organisms which are called host, but they do not kill the host in the process. Examples of parasitic nutrition are cascuta, orchids, ticks, lice, leeches, roundworms, tapeworms, etc. Holozoic nutrition is a type of nutrition in which organisms take food directly and then digest and absorb it. This type of nutrition is found in amoeba, paramecium, birds, fishes, humans, etc. We have learned that different food are eaten by different organisms by different means. Since the food and the way it is absorbed differs, the digestive system is different in various organisms. In single celled organisms, the food may be taken in by the entire cell surface as shown in the screen. But as the complexity of the organism increases, different parts become specialized to perform different functions. This diagram 
shows the various steps involved in nutrition in amoeba. Amoeba takes in food using temporary finger like extensions of the cell surface called pseudopodia which fuse over the food particle forming a food vacuole. Inside the food vacuole complex substances are broken down into simpler ones which then diffuse into the cytoplasm. The remaining undigested material is moved to the surface of the cell and thrown out. So that is how nutrition takes place in amoeba. Now let us move to the next part of today's session that is nutrition in human beings. The elementary canal in human beings is basically a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus. In this figure we can see that the tube has different parts and various regions are specialized to perform different functions. The elementary canal with its associated glands constitutes the digestive system. This diagram shows the various components of the digestive system in humans. We all take food at different intervals. Do you have any idea what happens to the food once it enters our body? We shall discuss this process here. When we eat various types of food, digestion of food starts in our mouth itself. Mechanical digestion takes place in the mouth with the help of our teeth. When we eat something we like, our mouth waters. This is actually not only water but a fluid called saliva secreted by the salivary glands. The saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down starch to simple sugar. When the food becomes a soft mass, the tongue pushes it to the food pipe or esophagus that runs along from the neck to the chest region. From the food pipe, food enters the stomach. It is necessary to move the food in a regulated manner along the digestive tube so that it can be processed properly in each part. The lining of the digestive canal has muscles that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward. These peristaltic movements occur all along the gut. The stomach is a large organ which expands when food enters into it. The muscular walls of the stomach helps in mixing the food thoroughly with more digestive juices. The gastric glands of the stomach releases gastric juice which contains hydrochloric acid and enzyme pepsin and mucus. The hydrochloric acid creates an acidic medium which facilitates the action of the enzyme pepsin. The mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions. Pepsin enzyme helps in the digestion of proteins. The exit of the food from the stomach is regulated by a sphincter muscle. From the stomach, the food now enters the small intestine. This is the longest part of the alimentary canal. The length of the small intestine differs in various animals depending on the food they eat. Herbivores eating grass need a longer small intestine to allow the cellulose to be digested. Meat is easier to digest, hence carnivores such as tigers have shorter intestine. It is about 7.5 meters long in human beings. Small intestine is the site for the complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. It receives the secretions of the liver and pancreas 
for this purpose. Liver secretes bile juice which breaks down the fat molecules into smaller globules. This process is called emulsification of fats. Bile juice is stored in the gall bladder. The food coming from the stomach is acidic and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act. This is also done by bile juice. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juice which contains trypsin and lipase enzyme. Trypsin helps in the digestion of proteins whereas lipase helps in breaking down emulsified fats. The walls of the small intestine contain glands which secrete intestinal juice. The enzymes present in the intestinal juice finally convert the proteins into amino acids, complex carbohydrates into glucose and fats into fatty acids and glycerol as you can see in your screen. Do you have any idea what happens to the food when it gets digested? Let's find out. The digested food is taken up by the cells in the wall of the small intestine. The inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger like projections called villi. Villi increases the surface area for absorption and they are richly supplied with blood vessels. The blood vessels take the absorbed food to each and every cell of the body where it is utilized for obtaining energy, building up new tissues and the repair of old tissues. The unabsorbed food is sent into the large intestine where its wall absorbs more water from this material. The rest of the material is removed from the body through the anus. This process is called ejection. We call the ejected material as fecal matter. The exit of this waste material is regulated by the anal sphincter. So, this is how nutrition takes place in human beings. Let's now have a quick recap of what we have learnt today. We have understood the term life processes. We have learned about the different modes of nutrition in plants and animals along with their examples. We have also learned in detail how nutrition takes place in human beings. It's now time to note down your assignment related to today's session. What criteria do we use to decide whether something is alive? Where do plants get each of the raw materials required for photosynthesis? How is the small intestine designed to absorb digested food? Prepare a flow chart to show digestion in human beings. With this, we have now come to the end of today's session. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much.